like the movie. I suppose you wonder why I brought us all together out here. Yeah, Bill, it had occurred to us to wonder, especially on a night like this. Don't get us wrong. We're always happy to see you, aren't we, Nan? Absolutely. But neither Lulu nor I can understand what you got us to come for. Yeah, all the way from Los Angeles, just to meet in this, uh, the... Uh, uh, shack is the word you're groping for, Lulu. Well, there's no need of delicacy, kid. Shack is the word, certainly. Hey, why do you suppose I live in a shack now? Because you broke? That's right. Then I'll bet you don't live in any mansion yourself. Well, I don't exactly. I'm a house guest for a week at a time with various friends. I tried that. Second time around, I wasn't welcome. QED, we're all broke. Yep. Amen. Well, I got you here because I know how we can make money. Much? Oh, about a quarter of a million. I'm glad I came. I think I'm glad I came. Just how do we go about earning this money, Bill? Well, uh, perhaps I'd better lead up to this gradually. Uh-oh. Now, Leonard, let me put a question to you. Ned, how long have you been out of work? Since Trans-Republic Pictures folded. Lulu? Since Trans-Republic Pictures folded. Well, I don't imagine you're in suspense about my situation, but I've been out of work since Trans-Republic folded, too. And it's my opinion that the only way that we three can make money... Uh, we used to make money, didn't we? Oh, sure, when Trans-Republic was casting us in some new turkey every month. Exactly, we used to make money. And I think that the only way that we can make money again is to do what we proved ourselves to be so good at back then. Bill Anders, did you get us all the way out here to the edge of the Nevada desert just to propose the formation of some repertory company? No. I'm as much a ham as anyone else, Bill, but to tell you the truth, I've been thinking lately that all three of us, if you'll pardon me for saying so, are very limited actors. Yeah, well, I know that. No, I haven't got any repertory company in mind. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I don't have acting in mind. Now, let, let me ask you, what is it we did in those pictures of ours? Well, usually we got sent to jail in the end. Yeah, that's true, but that was just to satisfy the crime doesn't pay people. When we were playing those pictures for Trans Republic, what was it that we were best at? Good heavens. Hiding in a shack. Yeah, that's right. Yo, this is like pulling teeth. Why were we hiding in a shack in every one of those pictures? Because... Oh, dear. Oh, Bill, you can't mean... In every picture, we kidnapped somebody, didn't we? Bill, let's go back to Los Angeles and see if we can get into television. In every picture, we kidnapped somebody, didn't we? And then hid in a shack, yeah. Here's the shack, heaven only knows. I hope you haven't got some innocent child tied up in the next room, Bill. Listen to me a minute, will you? I know those pictures we were in were no good, but they were researched. Now, maybe the rest of you didn't go around to the theaters to see them, but I did. Now, every one of them carried the seal of the National Investigation Council. Yeah, I was always some overage detective acting as technical director on each of those pictures. This means that a willing student could learn something from them. As I remember, what you usually learned was that crime doesn't pay. Yeah, how about that? Uh, you also learned why crime didn't pay when it didn't. Now, what always happened in that shack we hid out in? Well, there were two different things, depending on which one of the two plots we were using in the particular picture. Either Ned here would go into town for groceries and get drunk and talk to... Uh -huh, the... uh -huh. And is Ned really a drunk? Oh, yeah, I'm not. Or a blabbermouth? No. All right. So we're not going to be defeated by that kind of slip. Now, the other slip that was made in that other plot they used to put us in. Oh, yeah, sure, I, I remember. You and I would both get lustful about Lulu, and we'd kill each other off. All right, all right. But come on, this is real life. Is there any chance of such an absurd thing happening? Oh, good heavens, no. I hate you both. Well, now, look, I want to be fair. You've both forgotten one other plot. That's the one where we have the little blue-eyed, blonde-haired child. Lulu gets sentimental about him, and... And turns us all in. Hmm. You know, now that could happen. I like children. 
You like 16-year-old giggly girls who admire the Beatles? I detest them. Well, that is the kind of girl we are going to kidnap. Are you with me? Uh, Jay, uh, Bell, uh, how do we know we'd be any good at kidnapping? Huh? Because we've had more experience at it than anybody in the country. And we've got something, man. Certainly. You know what? I figured that I need about $12,000 a year just to eat and put clothes on me. What I have left at this moment is about two thousand. Yeah, you're lucky. I got fifteen hundred. Well, that's about what I've got. But as I say, we have one other asset: years of experience in kidnapping people. You said uh, there was a sixteen-year-old uh, giggly girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you remember from the pictures we were in, it's not the victim that matters so much as the victim's father. Naturally, he has to be wealthy. Well, he is. Now, I don't know why this man has taken up residence in that hamlet you passed through when you were coming out here, but he has. His name, you ready for this now? His name is Gregory Graham, and he is a tycoon. Now, nobody's ever seen him, but the long line operators in town goes around telling everyone how this Graham is always calling all over the country, putting over big business deals involving millions. Now, the place he's leased to live in is one of the show places of the whole West. Vans rumble along the road, bringing furniture and art objects to him. Oh, in short, he's rich enough to qualify to have his daughter kidnapped. That's right. And she has her own car, and every Thursday night she comes along the highway just two miles from here, slowing down as she gets opposite the home of a certain pimply youth who has caught her attention. Now, you can count on her being there at 8.30. What about the pimply youth? Now, we don't have to worry about him seeing us. He's shy. He runs and hides in the cow shed at 8.25. Did you say a quarter of a million dollars? Yeah. Let's take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Stop! Stop! Gee whiz, is something wrong? <sighs> yes, <clears throat> I was in an accident. Can you give me a ride back to town? Oh, gosh, yes. Get in. <clears throat> Thanks, kid. Come on, fellas. Uh -huh. This is a snatch. A what? A snatch. You mean a kidnapping? That's what we mean, sister. Oh, super. <laughs> Turn off the radio. Right. But I wanted to listen. Look, kid, you've been kidnapped and you'll do what we say. But I thought you wanted to listen to the radio, too. You're just the newscast. And we've heard three of those already. No more rock and roll. Well, it looks as if this kid's father didn't report it. Either that or the authorities didn't tell the reporters. How much ransom are you going to ask? Yeah, none of your business. Oh, I wish Ned would come back. Is that the other man's name? Where'd he go? Did he go to find my father? Aren't you afraid to louse things up? He doesn't look very reliable to me. Mary, he may not look reliable to you, but he has pulled no less than 85 kidnappings. Gosh, I'm impressed. That's Ned now. Oh, I'll get it. Don't open that door. Why not? Well, aren't you going to look out the window first? It might be the cops. No, she's right, Bill. Yeah, but you can't see the outside of the door from the window. You should have thought of that before you kidnapped me. Uh, yeah. What do we do? Hey, Bill, Lola, let me know. What is it? It's Ned. Let him in. What are we listening to this kid for? I was only trying to help. Oh, you certainly took your time. Did anybody follow you? No. Are you sure? Shut up! Well, Ned? Well, uh... Look, I'm practically certain this kid's father hasn't reported the snatch. There are two bars in town... I spent some time in each one. Yeah, yeah. I had my hair cut by the deputy sheriff, and I bought all this stuff at the local market. Mm -hmm. I swear, nobody in that town is excited about anything. Everybody's yawning, as a matter of fact. Fine, fine. And there was nothing on the radio. We better turn on the radio and listen to the next newscast. Sometimes they cut in with special bulletins. That'll be enough out of you. I said no more rock and roll. All right, all right, all right. We'll, uh, we'll uh, write the ransom note now. Okay. Want to dictate it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, take it down to block letters. I never heard of anything so dumb. What? Why? You cut letters out of a newspaper and magazines and paste them on a piece of paper. Hey, Bill, she's right. You know, that's what we did in the biter bit. Yes, but we got caught in the biter bit. But not for that reason. 
You and I were both in love with Lulu. That was a trouble. Oh, I guess you're right. Got any magazines? Any papers? Yeah, yeah, sure. Over there under the bed. Yeah, I am a reading man. As a matter of fact, we can cut whole words out of my copy of Remembrance of Things Past. Mm. Not a baffle of police. No, no, no. These papers and magazines will do. I told you that was how to do it. Now give me the scissors. Here. All right. Now the first letter we want is D. D? For what? Well, we start off. Dear Mr. Crane. Oh, that's silly. The first letter you want is W for warning. That's a darn good idea. Yeah. Now, what comes after warning? Well, wait a minute. Give me time to think. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Shut up, Ned. Give her time to think. Yeah. You know, Mary, I'm awfully glad it's you we kidnapped. Gregory Graham speaking. This is the party that sent you the note. Is my daughter safe? We're talking about a parcel that me and my friends are holding for you. You know, oh, yes, I forgot. Is the parcel safe? Listen to me. Tonight at 8.15, you drive into town, you go into the Mary Andrew Saloon. What? You have two boilermakers. And then leave and go back to your car. But I, I got this ulcer. I can't drink. Oh. Well, um, have three ginger ales. Three ginger... In the Mary Andrew Saloon, everybody will laugh at me. Let them laugh. Now, do you understand what you're to do? Yeah, all right. Will my daughter be in the car when I come back to it? Just follow instructions. Yes, but... Hello? Hello? I'm going to be the laughing stock of the Mary Andrew... Well? He did it. He drove into town slowly. Yeah, yeah. Parked his car and went into the bar. He had two boiler makers and surreptitiously poured them into the spittoon. Good then he went out, waited a while, and then drove back to his house. Yeah, nobody was following him? Nobody. I'm convinced he hasn't told the cops. All right, all right. Ned's in the next room with young Mary. Let's get him. <laughs> Hey, turn that thing off! I'm sorry, Bill. I kind of like it. I've been teaching him the nuances. Never mind nuances. The time's come for the second phone call, kid. Hello. Gregory Graham speaking. I'm very satisfied with the way you behaved yourself, Mr. Graham. Well, I'm not satisfied. Where's my parcel? I warn you, I don't want one hair of her head harmed. Did you really think you were going to get her when you went into town? We didn't even tell you to bring the ransom money with you. We were just testing you. Well, all right. Are you satisfied now? Yeah. You got the $250,000? Certainly I have. All right. I know that you know where the old abandoned last dollar silver mine is because uh, you were making inquiries about buying it. Yes, yes, I know where it is. Go there at midnight. Bring the money. Now, you know how the entrance of the mine is boarded up? Yeah. Well, it isn't boarded up anymore. You go into the mine. Just inside the entrance, there's a cardboard box. Mm. You want me to put the money in the box? No. We want you to put the box over your head. What? And you walk down the stairs to the abandoned shaft. Keep the box on your head. But I'll fall and break my neck. That's up to you. When you get to the bottom of the stairs, my confederate will be there to meet you. Well, all right. Hey, Lolo. I'm worried. And so am I. Well, I didn't see why. What are you worried about? Gosh. Bill was supposed to meet your father in the mine at midnight. The mine is 15 minutes away from here, and it's now 1 o'clock in the morning. I bet he did fall down those stairs and break his neck. I don't see why you insisted he put that silly box on his head in the first place. Well, gee whiz, you didn't want my father to see you, did you? Lolo? Yeah? Suppose he did fall down those stairs and die. 
You, you remember anything like that from any of those pictures? I, I mean, uh, under the law, are we then murderers? I don't think so. Oh, yes. It's the natural and probable result. I read that somewhere. And you were committing a felony. I mean, kidnapping is a felony, isn't it? Oh, shut up. Oh, here they are. Oh, thank heavens. Come in, come in. Oh, uh, yeah. brother, what a time we had. You better take my arm. I can't see a thing. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 right this way, Mr. Graham. Thank you, young man. What took you so long, Bill? Did you ever try to get a man to walk a straight line across a field at midnight when his head is in a box? Is my daughter here? I'm here, Daddy. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. They treated me just super. Uh, Where's the money? Here, here. It's in this package. Uh, my daughter and I will go now. Not until we count the money, you don't. Uh, oh. Here goes. <laughs> Let me add it. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Hey, yep. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? Daddy, you've taken all the funny money from my Make a Million game. Just what is the big idea? If you'll let me take this silly box off my head, I'll explain. Ned, take that box off his head. Yeah, okay. There we are. Uh, Greg Greg White! White. Why are you all saying Greg White? That was my daddy's professional name. It certainly is a surprise to see you three here. Lulu, Ned, and Bill. You know them, Daddy? Mary and some 85 to 100 pictures that I made for Trans Republic... I played a tycoon, and these three people played kidnappers. Good heavens. Kidnappers? You're, you're still playing kidnappers. Yeah, well, that's quite apparent. What in the devil are you doing, Greg? I'm playing a tycoon. Oh, no. Uh, ever since Trans Republic closed down, I've been broke. And finally, I had three or $4,000 left that I figured I could put to work for me, convincing people in real life that I was indeed a tycoon. You mean... You haven't got any real ransom money to pay us? He's got three or four thousand, he said so. Not any longer. I rented a big house. I staged phone calls to friends for the local operator to listen to. I bought a lot of things on credit all the time, waiting to work up a genuine deal with somebody who had money. And you got no nibbles. So I got a dozen nibbles from people who expected me to finance them. I tell you... I've been at the end of my rope for the past week. I'm in debt to the tune of $2,500 or so, and I haven't known where to turn. Uh, <clears throat> until now, of course. Until now? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain yourself. <laughs> well, it's very simple. My wife and two friends know where I went tonight. Up until now, I haven't reported Mary's kidnapping. But if I don't return by three in the morning, my wife and those friends of mine will report it. In that event, it ought to seem like old times to you. You'll be caught by the police again. Oh, well, look, what do you think we are? You can go. Take Mary and go. Well, go. I want a little more than that. What do you mean? I want $2,500. You're crazy. Daddy, you're a wonderful businessman after all. Well, I figure you people have committed a federal offense that carries a mandatory death sentence, but I'm willing to settle out of court. Yeah, well, I, 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 I think that's a very shaky law. Oh, no, it isn't. Shall we? We drive into the sheriff's office and see what he thinks about it? He's got us. Hey, Bill. Can't you think any way out of it? Well, I... No. Cash, please. What now? How about a bank robbery? We did a couple of those in the old days. No, no. How about robbing a warehouse? Huh? Forrest? Hmm? You remember that picture we were in? What was the name of it? No, 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 kids, let's face it. We've got to go to work just like everybody else. Oh, oh no. Theater 5 has presented Why Can't Life Be More Like the Movies, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Jackie Grimes, Stotts Cotsworth, Arlene Walker, Ralph Bell, and Marie Masters. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlas Dotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. 
Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York.